Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today I'm excited to be unboxing The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. It's a board game of adventure and exploration for one to five players. I'll be looking at this from a solo perspective. The game was designed by Nathan Hajik and Grace Holdinghaus and this is published by Fantasy Flight Games. So one very important note that I want to make, guys, is that this particular product was provided to me as a review copy from Fantasy Flight Games, and I want to really thank them for providing me the opportunity to showcase this one with you guys to show you whether or not this is something that could potentially be for you or not. And really, that's the goal of this. I'm going to be not only showing you the components and what's inside of this box, we're also going to move into a showcase showing the solo setup as well as the playthrough to give you a better idea of how this game actually actually works and whether it's something that interests you or not. Now being a big fan of Mansions of Madness myself, this one intrigued me from the get-go when that first announcement came out that it was happening because of how absolutely successful and extremely well done Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition is. So when you throw the Lord of the Rings IP into that same type of bucket, I'm very, very interested to see whether the gameplay mechanics are something completely new and fresh. I'm also interested to see how they actually relate back to the IP itself and whether it feels like Lord of the Rings for me and all of those good things. Another thing to make mention of is that I am not being paid in any way, shape or form for this particular video. I wanted to make that completely clear that I'm doing this fueled from passion alone. So that is gonna conclude the overview portion of the video. Let's now take a close look at the back of the box. It says, not all those who wander are lost. It's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out your door. You step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. And that's a quote from Bilbo Baggins, as we all know. This game says on the back of the box, Journeys in Middle Earth, and it's a fully cooperative board game of fantasy and adventure for one to five players. Players, you and your friends take on the roles of the heroic characters from the J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, traveling through Middle-earth to battle villainous foes, make courageous choices, and fight against the evil that threatens the land. With an immersive campaign featuring branching narratives, multiple side quests, and a procedural map generation system, Journeys in Middle-earth is continually surprising and highly replayable. Throughout the game's interwoven scenarios, you must work together to unravel mysteries, fight enemies, and further the story as you protect Middle-earth from the en encroaching darkness. Adventure awaits only those who are bold enough to seek it. Gather your friends, pack your bags, and find your fortunes with Journeys in Middle-earth. You can see at the very bottom of the box here, it has the game components all listed out. I'm not going to go over those. You can see them visually on the screen. We're going to actually take a look at them in hand here. And of course, similar to Mansions of Madness, it mentions right here that it does require the free digital companion app. Of course, this is going to be the engine driving the AI behind the game, as well as that procedural map generation system. Uh, you've got yourself a listing here of, of particular sleeves that you can actually use. There's also sleeves made by other companies as well well you've got yourself a one to five player window so perfect for solo gamers right out of the box so without further ado let's flip this thing over take off the box lid and see what's inside so as soon as you remove the box cover you're going to be greeted here with a gigantic stop and it's referencing the fact that you need to pick up the free digital companion app which you can pick up from either the app store with apple devices you can get it on google play you can pick it up through amazon or you can pick it up on steam so regardless of your your outlet or personal device of choice, you're going to have options here in order to play this particular game. But be known the fact that you do need an app in order to play this game. It does not function without one. So what you'll see here is that you can actually pick this thing up across multiple devices, whether it be your phone, tablets, computers, all that good stuff. You should be able to find a way in this day and age in order to enjoy this experience. And if you're very familiar with Mansions of Madness, you understand that there is extreme value in doing so. So once you get past this page, the next thing you're greeted with is the typical Fantasy Flight catalog here, which is going to be a representation of their catalog of games. So it's going to be all the games that they currently have out. Um, actually, a number of these I've done on the channel, the ones that are solo re related, like uh, Arkham Horror the Card Game, Imperial Assault, Mansions of Madness, Fallout, but not every one of them, because not all of them are solo playable. 
This one, however, is. So this is where things get really interesting because we start finding out how do we actually play this particular game. Well, you're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and it's gonna give you what seems to be a really nice overview as well as some nice illustration along with it. You've got a layout here of your component list. If you're familiar with Fantasy Flight's rulebook style in terms of its format, there's not gonna be too much difference here. I'm noticing off the hop though that the font is just a little bit smaller than what I'd probably be normally uh, accustomed to with Fantasy Flight's products, I believe. So there's a little bit more white space going on actually. But for me, that's not an issue. You've also got playing the game over here. You've got all your different actions. So the action phase, you can travel, you can explore, you can attack, you can interact with things. So it does kind of give you that vibe like Mansions of Madness in terms of those major actions that are gonna be then again used inside of the app in order to create the story or the narrative as it drives forward. You've got the shadow phase for the enemies, the enemy activation, darkness step, threat step, uh, the rally phase at the very end. This is actually not a very large rule book. So if you're trying to figure out whether you're gonna be sitting there reading this for a very long period of time, the one bonus with the app companion is the fact that the game is almost in essence running itself and as long as you understand the actions you can perform then that's where the meat of the game is for you and the app will basically unveil things to you as you go through it so it really is a lot about exploration and adventure which is exactly what they're trying to capture here in this and i think this is going to be a really interesting and maybe a different twist than what you saw in mansions of madness but i'm very excited for it so you've got all kinds of other uh you know references towards the end of this rule book in case you need uh, to be referencing specific keywords, very similar to most Fantasy Flight products. Next up here, we've got the rules reference. And what I just said is pretty much an extension of that through the rules reference, which is just tons of keywords um, in reference to the rule book. So for instance, situations where you're going, I don't know how an action phase works. You're going to go to the rules reference to find rules beyond just the general high level rule you find in the rule book. So I've always liked the way they've broken these things out because if you already understand the game, you'll maybe never need to look at the learn to play ever again. And you'll only truly need the rules reference close by for those tricky situations every so often. So the rules reference is extremely awesome in that way and it also has some fantastic artwork there with the balrog and gandalf so here is the first of nine separate sheets of punch out tokens and tiles to deal with in this one so it is absolutely no slouch when it comes to providing you with a whole bunch of things to punch out we're going to go through these one by one so you get a clear look at all of them so this is the first sheet off the top and of course they're double-sided as most tiles are especially going back to mansions of madness so when i flip this thing over we're going to see some alternative artwork in different areas of middle earth shown on the opposite side of these tiles but there's also other uh, tokens mixed in between which i'm not going to talk specifically towards because i'm not sure how they're implemented just yet but i'm sure they're all part of the questing and the objectives and everything you need to fulfill throughout and you've also got what looks to be some terrain here like trees and things like that that may be able to affect the particular location you're in now that's quite a difference there you flip that over and you start seeing a lot of rivers and ocean basically attached to these particular land terrain tiles and and I'm starting to see different types of terrain also on these punch outs, which are pretty cool. Uh, we've also got different tokens in general. So as you can see, the artwork on it's really, really finely detailed. There's actually little tiny buildings and small trees and little rock formations and caves and things like that shown on these tiles, which I think is really cool, keeping the scope kind of really high level so that the adventure will likely feel very epic when you start building out each scenario. So here is tile number two, again, very different in terms of what you're seeing here none of the tiles so far that i can tell have any duplication on them whatsoever so that's already exciting me i really hope that that continues throughout this it means you know, there's a lot of options the other thing that's cool is that you have to think about the fact that this is showing world instead of it being focused like mansions of madness was inside of a building so you're really seeing a uh, kind of a world basically in terms of scale opening up in front of you and i think when these start joining together to create a particular scenario it's going to really feel quite epic um and the cool thing is there's little tiny things, as I mentioned earlier, like the bridge here. You got a cave over here. I'm noticing small, tiny apples on the ground next to these trees over here. So there's detail, even though it's at a high level. And you're also seeing some different tokens. You got brush or trees. I'm not sure what those represent 100% just yet. But I imagine there'll be some people out there that'll try to add some 3D, um, you know, third-party components to this to really spice it up. 
Well now, that was quite a dramatic change. I didn't see that coming. I actually didn't know if there would be any underground locations or in-building locations at all in this particular game because all I had seen personally was just things outside. So what I'm seeing now is there actually are going to be some locations that are inside of buildings like you're seeing here or potentially underground caverns and things like that. So this is already starting to get me excited already. The fact that we're not just going to be seeing, you know, forest terrain everywhere all the time. There's going to be reason to explore other areas that might delve into these other particular underground or interior locations, which is pretty awesome. So here's another tile. Again, you're seeing different types of terrain almost on every single one. Now we've got kind of got some stones going on here here um, and things like that. So let's move to the next tile and see what's in store for us. So the next tile takes us back outside again, but again you can see the variation of the locations and the tiles in this case are actually quite a bit bigger than some of the other tiles prior to it, but you're seeing all kinds of mountain ranges here. You've got ruins over here. You've got more kind of a ruined castle or some type of uh, uh, settlement that was there and is now kind of reduced to rubble. Um, we've got all kinds of interesting terrain tokens like campfires, some barrels, some tokens that I'm not familiar with yet at all. But things are getting quite interesting the more and more I look at this. Let's flip this over and see what's on the other side. Now this is a nice surprise. Look at this, more terrain that's different than just the forest terrain. Plus we're starting to see some unique things on these tiles in terms of gems and maybe some glowing mushrooms and some campfires and skulls. This is probably not a place you really want to hang out in. It looks like somewhere where a lot of orcs and goblins would be hanging out. But again, it's a very interesting terrain. Again, making me think about all the possibilities that this game could really open up. It excites me. The next punch board in line has some more locations out in the wild. So we got all kinds of stuff going here. Looks like we kind of got garden areas here. We have more of a town feel with this one. Uh, there's also some ruins again here. We have some water areas, some streams going through, and then of course some actual terrain with streams and more tokens to look at. Well, there's a whole bunch of ruins right there. This whole tile is literally just a, what used to likely be a large city that has been reduced to pretty much nothing. And then you have this one over here, which is kind of like a nice walk on dirt road all the way up to a shack up there in the corner. This one is, you've got an island kind of sitting here, a rock formation, and then another ruin or a castle that once was. I'm also noticing there's all these little uh, compasses sitting on all these tiles. So again, not 100% sure how that all works out just yet with the mechanics of the game, but uh, I am very, very intrigued as we continue to move through these tiles. This next tile sheet here has some things we haven't seen before, like banners, it appears. So these could be representative of the enemies and where they're located on the map. I don't know if there's a reveal mechanic in terms of not knowing what your enemy is until you get close enough to know it. Uh, that type of thing. That'd be really cool if it was for that, or it could just represent different groups of enemies you're going to be fighting. Uh, but regardless, we got banners involved here. We've also got some more locations involved, some more tokens. Things are looking pretty awesome. On the reverse side of that tile sheet, we've got tons of ruins. This looks like a tile that's just basically dedicated to cities that once were and are no longer. All right, this next tile here has some differences that I'm noticing than what I've seen before. We've got some actual legitimate buildings here that are not ruins, so things that are worth exploring. We've got interesting terrain uh, tiles here showing up that I'm not 100% sure. It looks like it could be fog or something like that. Not too sure. Uh, we got barrels, more of the banners, fireplace uh, kind of set up, and we've got some more trees or bushes here. And these are really interesting. It looks like a campsite down here, kind of like a woodworking area where someone was chopping wood and kind of just hanging out. Um, and then up here looks like a very small area with a couple locations and little ponds in there as well. Ah, look at this. We got ourselves a bustling little town here that we can actually end up finding somewhere along the journey. So it looks like we literally have some buildings that are still in place. So there's gonna be a mix of, you know, actual towns that are thriving and some that have uh, thrived in the past and not so much anymore. And then we've got more kind of ominous dirt trails off into who knows where they take you. And then some of these are just trails leading up to water as well. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the water interplays with the gameplay as well. And more terrain tokens that are specific to different things we'll find out later. All right, I told you there was a lot of tiles with this game. I was not joking. Um, so here is more tiles, more places to explore and find particular situations in. Who knows what we're gonna find in all these different spots. Some of these tiles are actually quite large. I'm gonna flip this over 
over. This is a really cool one. The rock formation is kind of leading up to almost a cliff edge, which is pretty awesome. Now that is cool. There is a castle that again once was and has been just completely demolished, but that is a really awesome structure. Would be cool to kind of run into that thing. You got another town over here that's been a little bit devastated and parts of it over here. So that actually I think wraps up the kind of high level overview of the world type tiles and we have a couple of tiles i think that are coming up right now from what i can see off camera that are very different all right so we have a tile here that's uh, broken up into five different quadrants of rectangles and a square so very very interesting i'm not too sure what this is used for but now i'm starting to think that, that the larger terrain that we saw that didn't really scale so well with the terrain in the uh, kind of world view as we were going through those tiles might be used like a campfire in the rocks and things like that might be used on this particular particular board. I'm actually not 100% certain, but it kind of makes sense now. Let's flip this thing over and see if there's different type of terrain on the opposite side. Yeah, sure is. There is some cobblestone and rock formations here on the opposite side. So I'm guessing this is going to be like the in-depth closer in battles maybe, or certain things will happen within certain locations. And this is kind of the more uh, mansions of madness level of scope in terms of the tiles here, uh, getting a little bit closer in view of uh, what's going on in a particular situation but I'm not 100% sure yet so I don't want to speak on that too early and just so you guys are aware there's another tile that's actually exactly the same as the tile we just went ahead and looked at it has the grass on one side and then if you flip it over another set of the cobblestone on the other so again got to find out what this is all about very different and actually wasn't anticipating that all right, so once all the tiles are dealt with, you're left with a number of cards and miniatures to go through next. So how about we take a nice, close, in-depth look at all the miniatures that come within the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. All right, so now that we've dealt with the miniatures and got a nice close-up view of all of those, let's take a look at the cards. That's really the major meat here that's left in this box. We've got ourselves some larger cards representing the heroes. We'll go through those one at a time close up. We also have two packs of large amounts of mini cards in this box that uh, I'll likely be sleeving in the future. And then we've also got some plastic bases here that we'll be using for some of the tokens and tiles that we saw earlier on. So for now, I'll take these standees out of here, not the standees, but the actual stands themselves and we'll take a close-up look at some of the character cards all right so here is a nice up close view of some of the heroes that are going to come on the journey with you in lord of the rings journeys in middle earth you've got yourself a couple characteristics here on each of these cards might wisdom agility spirit and will also it looks like a special ability built in down here once per round after you sprint hide or strike you may scout one and it tells you what type of individual you're dealing with, whether it's a human, probably elf or anything like that. You've also got this here, which I have no idea what it represents. I know what it is, but I don't know what it actually represents in the terms of mechanics. Um, so that's interesting. My guess on the back of this card will be some type of story. Yes, this is usually pretty common for a fantasy flight. They usually put background information on their characters on the back. So you can read about that particular character and learn about them. You've also got here a suggested start. So as a role or items, that they should start with, but I'm guessing you don't have to stick with that once you become familiar with the game. So there is the first uh, hero. Next up here, we have Gimli. Nice, another character we're very familiar with. Differences here, I'm seeing a section for fear and damage, which uh, again, I'll have to learn about as I go along. And all the values here, I wouldn't be surprised if they're all different. Your actual um, uh, special ability here says, after you attack, you may place one card from the, te uh, from the test on top of your deck. Interesting, interesting. Flip this over and you get an in-depth view of Gimli's background, although I'm sure a lot of us are very familiar with Gimli. His suggested role and suggested items to start with. 
Legolas will also be joining us on the journey. Now, you guys are going to recognize some of the artwork in this game because it's pulled and is also used, I believe, from Lord of the Rings, the living card game. So if you're familiar with some of that artwork, you might see it crop up here as well. And it's fantastic artwork, so it's a smart choice on their part to do that. Might, Wisdom, Agility, Spirit, Will, again, different values, some of them the same, some of them different, different fear and damage values, different value here next to this particular area, but I don't know what it's for just yet, as I mentioned. Once per round during your turn, you may spend one inspiration to move one space without provoking attack. So he's basically able to sneak around, as an elf should, without being uh, spotted. Background is suggested or start his role of a hunter. Items are the Great Bow and the Cloak. Perfect for Lagless. There are so many characters to go through. This is awesome. We have another elf to join the fray. And again, different values here. Some of them the same, some of them different. Once per test, after you spend one inspiration, a nearby hero gains one inspiration. So an elf that inspires, that is awesome. I'm just going to move down here to a background and the suggested start. A musician and a dagger and a harp and a cloak. We've got ourselves another character we're all very, very familiar with. And again, definitely some hard work from uh, the card game. Uh, before you interact, look at the top card of your deck. If it is a card with that symbol, gain one inspiration. You can equip only one. Very cool. Flipping it over to the opposite side here, we got the background for Bilbo that we're all extremely familiar with at this point. Uh, if you're new to Lord of the Rings, and you certainly need to read the books and then watch the movies. Uh, they're fantastic. Uh, and there's also uh, The Hobbit as well, which is where you'll learn mostly about Bilbo. Uh, Roll, he's a burglar. His items are dagger and cloak. So lots of daggers and cloaks to start. Nice, we even get Aragorn in this one. I didn't know actually all the heroes that were involved, but it looks like we got some of the major characters to start with. This one says, when uh, heroes scout during the rally phase, you you and nearby heroes each reveal one additional card. And you've got uh, Aragorn's background there and suggested role as the captain, no surprise. Sword, banner, and travel garb. That is going to do it for the character cards. All right, time to go through some cards. And there is a ton of these things. So first off, there's artwork involved, a title. There's actual specifics about the ability that it's talking about. Sometimes there's a keyword at the bottom here, which references what this card is all about. This one is Wanderer. We've got Strider. Now, I'm not going to be able to speak to any of these, so I'm just going to go through and show you these, but I'm guessing that these potentially could be abilities for certain starting characters would be my guess. Um, these are all innate, as you can see here, so they have to be in my in my my best guess, at least. Um, and you've got them down here at the bottom saying Bilbo 1, Bilbo 2, so it's, again, proving that these are likely tied to the characters that we just went through. So you're going to go ahead here and take a look at some of the artwork and the skills involved, as well as who they're actually owned by, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the artwork on these cards, even though it takes up actually half the card, which is kind of cool because it focuses mainly on uh, what's going on there, but also gives enough space down here to flesh out the actual ability that you're referencing. Restless Axe. This is so thematic. It's going to be so much fun, I think. I cannot wait to see how the mechanics actually pan out. The really cool thing that I noticed when I unbox this, guys, is there's absolutely no dice. That's a real interesting thought process on Fantasy Flight's part because I have never seen that happen very often. I shouldn't say I've never seen that happen, but I haven't seen it happen very often. Dice are usually a part of the equation in some of these adventure game. Uh, so to actually have a game that's specific to using cards is going to be a very different uh, mentality going into it. So I'm really interested to see how that pans out. Um, so I'm kind of just going through these one at a time. Some of them seem to be, there's two of each. So it potentially, I'm not too sure if some of these will be similar to uh, Mansions of Madness or Eldritch Horror where you like flip the card over and something's on the back. But uh, for now, I believe the backs of all these cards have generic art on them for the type of card that they are. And I haven't seen any that are two-sided yet. But I also haven't seen all the cards yet. So I'm kind of just going through here. Ah, you don't want concussions. These look like things that can happen to your heroes that I'm sure you don't want to happen. Exhaustion, entangled, feeble, short of breath, fever, sudden sickness, poisons, ugh, putrid bile bruises. There's all kinds of terrible things that can happen here to your character, which is, doesn't sound very good. Crushed, stunned, shaken, knocked, prone, weariness, a bunch of weariness. Apparently you get very, very weary on the road. Uh, there you go. Flip the card face down. So it, it does have a mechanic in terms of, of that. I don't know if there's anything actually on the back of it. No. So it is just a regular bordered card. 
All right, so as you can see here, it continues through all the weariness cards, which I'll jump past, and then we got an off course. Interesting. So that's kind of different. I don't know if these are going to get into like story or you know time is a, is a part of the situation, or maybe these are just event cards. Those are interesting. So if I flip them over, they have generic backs on them, um, but they do have uh, what does this say down here? Oh, it's a weakness. Oh, interesting. So these are weaknesses that can affect your characters. Misfortune. Look at how much artwork is on these cards. It's crazy. It takes up like the whole thing. It's really cool. It kind of reminds me of the Lord of the Rings, uh, the living card game collector's edition, where it really put an emphasis on artwork uh, on the cards. So I'm not too sure how that's going to work, but it looks like they're only doing it on the cards where it makes sense to do so when there's not much need for actual abilities to be drawn out, which I like because they're making use of that gorgeous artwork they have. Um, so many, so many things to look at. So many things to ooh and awe over. I absolutely love love looking at the art here i could probably do this forever um and i'm hoping i'm giving enough of a glance at the bottom of the screen so you guys can pause and take a look at some of the abilities on the cards if you want to see something close up i'm just going through this at a speed that you guys can read it if you'd like or stop at any point in time and uh, pause on a particular card that you think is cool and see what it's all about um, I'm noticing that different cards have these little gems in the bottom and icons that represent you know, what they are. I'm not going to even try to speak to most of those because I don't want to get them wrong or give you guys the wrong information there, but mainly just kind of showing you all these things. Gloom, lots of gloom, lots of gloom. Uh, there's a the different looking card. So they're obviously getting very creative with the templates. You got uh, stuff up top in the middle, you got the title, and then you've got these little look like loot. This could be loot cards potentially, maybe? rope or items you can find that's kind of cool boots so yeah these are the items it looks like so you got handkerchief uh, forget me never old pipe long stem pipe storm maker helmets dwarf forged helmet fire scale the, the items are always cool to go through it's always interesting to see what they look like so many i'm just going to put the rest off to the side because there's actually more than i can possibly hold uh tome tome of battle just tons and tons and tons of stuff. So this is actually going to complete the first pile of cards, the first pile of mini cards. There's still one more in this box that I'd like to show you guys. And now we move into another deck of mini cards. So many cards in this one. But again, if you don't have dice, then I guess cards are the way to go. So I'm going to be really interested to see how much luck is in this game if cards are the option. And if you're actually making strategic you know, choices throughout this game, or if the element of luck has been greatly removed, besides the fact that uh, you have a app which can basically auto-generate things, which can introduce elements of luck back into the game inherently on its own anyway. But uh, in terms of combat, I'm curious to see if the combat's going to be, you know, if you have it and you're established, you have certain items and a certain character and certain powers, you get what you get what you get. You don't have this, like, randomness in terms of you might roll something that's a decent attack, you might not. Or maybe there is a deck in here that actually you know, is a modifying type of deck that somehow impacts the attack in a random way. So it'll be interesting to see how they've how they've dealt with that in this game, being that there's no dice. So I continue to talk about that because I'm actually really surprised that there isn't any. Um, so it intrigues me very much. Um, but you can see there's a lot of cards, and some of these cards bring back such great memories from the living card game, and some of them, some of them I recognize right away, and other ones I'm debating whether I've seen them before or not, and there's just so many cards from the living card game like this, for instance, is a, is a classic one, that in this one too, um, that, you know, you couldn't keep track of them all if you tried. There's just so many cards, it's insane. Uh, Time of Need, Undying Might, Honed Agility, just a crazy, crazy amount. Some of them look like they're starting to duplicate a bit. So these could end up being cards that make up those you know, the, the hero's decks in some way, because I am seeing a lot of duplication there. So those, that usually makes me think that those are starting decks and maybe your deck is changing as the game, game goes on. Um, so I'm gonna put these cards down so we can kind of get in depth with these ones. But it looks like this one here is a stream. So these are actually starting to talk about terrain. So this is where we were going back to the tiles. It looks like there's cards that associate themselves here and maybe you're pulling from this deck and this is, oh, it's mist. I thought it was fog, but uh, close enough. All right, so continuing on in our wonderful pile of cards to go through here, we got so many different things to look at. 
uh, garbs coming up here. We've got all kinds of clothing related cards. Oh my goodness, there's just so much cloaks. And I, I really can't wait to be able to understand this to the point I can explain every single thing that I'm seeing, but this is just so cool to go through. Hidden, that's kind of cool. So if you're attacked before you uh, test, prevent all, I'm guessing this damage, maybe, and discard this boon. When you attack, you may discard this boon to add one. Very cool. Being hidden seems like a good thing. Got other things that you can potentially do as well. These are very reminiscent of what I remember from like Eldritch Horror and, and Mansions of Madness. So it kind of looks like uh, conditions type thing. Daggers here. So these are the types of things that your characters will start with that we were looking at earlier on. Uh, not some of these fancier daggers, but uh, the regular dagger. There's a sword, so like Aragorn would start with the sword. Not one of these fancier swords that he could probably find later on. Staffs are involved. Um, this one is upside down. It's likely that I put that in the deck the wrong way somehow. And Maiden Wrath. Great bows. Oh, there's the bows for Legolas. He'll be happy. The battle axe. There we go. So battle axe upgrades for Gimli. Harps for the musician that we saw. And ban. Oh, there's the banners. So interesting. So that's kind of how the banners come into play, I guess. Not too sure how that works, but there they are. And that is going to wrap up the unboxing. I'm really excited for this one. I want to get to the table as quickly as possible to show you guys what's in store in Journeys in Middle Earth. I hope it's really informative for you in making a decision as to whether to pick this game up or not. Either way, it's just there for informational purposes to help you make a decision. The next step, if you stay tuned to the channel, will be a solo setup for Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth, where we're going to actually prepare to play through this game solo with the app integration mixed in as well. You'll be able to see how that actually flows and works and we'll be moving into a playthrough where you'll actually get a feeling of how it actually plays. Thank you again for watching and as always, keep on rolling solo.